Hey, what is up? My name is Rubidium. Today we are looking at why film gear is so expensive. So I want to shoot my film. I'm going to get online and look at, you know, just pick up a couple of things. Uh, should be fine, right? I need, first thing I need is a, um, a hard drive to store my footage on. Uh, I was shooting red, so I'll just pick up a, you know, 960 gig uh, mini mag. Oh, three thousand dollars. Well, that's cool. I don't. I don't need such a big one. Um, you know what? We're going to be shooting outside. There's going to be some sun in the lens. I'll just get a little little flap to like go over the front of the camera and and uh, and keep the glare off. Uh, Ari makes one. Five grand. Huh. Well, that's cool. I mean, I'll just get a basic tripod. I mean, the camera's kind of heavy, so I'll get one that's you know the right capacity and. Uh, $14,000 for a tripod? This is a process that a lot of new time filmmakers or maybe indie filmmakers go through when they, they head into a more professional realm. And a lot of people, myself included, asked why is film gear so expensive? What, you know, there are great $500 tripods out there. What's so good about a $14,000 tripod? that it's 30 times more expensive than one that's half the capacity. There are a lot of factors at work here. The biggest one is a lot of film gear, including the ones that I just described here, uh, are made to be mission critical. They are over-engineered to a ridiculous extent, to the point where the operator will break before the camera breaks. They're made for shooting big budget films where you only have Tom Cruise for two days um, and the 100 or 200 million dollar budget all depends on him making this jump and you capturing it. So it's fine for Ari to go totally over the top with their production, with their R&D, with their materials, with their engineering and create something that is far, far, far more um, resistant than anyone would actually need for that one in a million time that you really need the shot and professionals will pay for it. I guess it comes down to the concept of margin of safety. If you're building a bridge that has to carry a one ton truck across a river, do you build that bridge to carry one and a half tons or two tons? Probably not. You probably build that bridge to carry 20 or 30 or 40 tons so that not in anyone's wildest dreams could it fail in a way that would injure people or kill someone or ruin the shot. So a lot of film gear is way over engineered for what it is. Um, and that's why it's far more expensive than you would think it would be. The second reason is that film gear, especially high end film gear is a very niche market. So the R and D that goes into developing these products is only spread over 50 or hundred units. Meaning that if someone sat down and designed this thing, tested it, prototyped it, machined it, went back and forth to wherever it's manufactured to make it, that cost has to be distributed over far fewer units than say an iPhone case that's there's gonna be millions and millions and millions of them made. Um, the manufacturer knows that although a lot of R&D goes into it, it can be distributed over many, many units. The same is not true with film gear. Limited runs also brings me to the next point, which is that a lot of film gear manufacturers and camera manufacturers have to um, include the cost of all the products that didn't make it. There are plenty of cameras out there uh, that they spent time and effort and money developing accessories for that never took off and they have warehouses full of this stuff that no one's ever going to buy. They can't just write that off. That cost needs to be absorbed by the cameras and the accessories that do make it to market and are profitable. And the last reason that camera gear is so expensive is that people will pay for it. Uh, a lot of time, the people that buy these, you know, $3,000 mini mags or these $5,000 mat boxes, um, and I definitely have included myself in that category, are uh, passing that cost along, shall we say, to the people that they're working for. They know that, you know, if someone's spending a hundred or $200,000 over a one day shoot to shoot a commercial, you know, a two or three thousand dollar rental fee on a camera or a light or you know a camera package isn't a significant um, addition to the budget. So DPs and grips and gaffers buy this stuff and then rent it out to the productions and make money that way. And you know there is a lot of uh, incentive, shall we say, in the film industry to keep 
gear expensive to keep it over engineered and keep it um, constantly evolving so that uh, people can make money selling it but also people can who the people who buy it can make money at renting it back to the jobs that they're on you know there are a lot of jobs that I've worked on that could have done that really could have shot it on an iPhone uh, with a table lamp but that's not how the advertising industry works or the film industry people want their you know Alexa minis and their light panels and their um, sky panels and their um, you know four ton grip trucks they want all that stuff there to make it feel like it's real uh, think of that whatever you want but that's the reality of the industry there were just a couple of thoughts that I had about um, the gear that I buy the gear that I don't buy and really why um, the film and video accessories industry has evolved in the way that it has so next time you um, are searching b &H or Amazon and like break out in cold sweats uh, there's a reason for that. It's usually that that tool is incredibly specialized um, for that job, that it's over-engineered, um, and that it does that job really well. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, I will see you next time.